thank you, and good morning. Uh, I love Stefan's presentations. <laughs> it's quite, quite interesting to listen at. Uh, after a nice night at the castle, it's my turn to start the, the day. And uh, my title is Coffee Challenges 2023. And I speak because I had the experience of being the 22-23 chair for the International Coffee Organization. For those do, who do not know, the International Coffee Organization is the intergovernmental uh, organization, the only intergovernmental association, uh, organization for coffee. It's the international commodity body for coffee. And nowadays, it's more and more opening towards uh, private sector, uh, especially after the International Coffee Agreement 2022, uh, the association is more in integrating more officially and even more tighter the private sector, but because the public sector realizes that it doesn't work if we, they don't get the feedback, fundamental feedback from us. I'm from the private sector. And also Vanusia Nogueira, she is also from the private sector, our, the, our executive director. So it, is, it was a very interesting experience and uh, when Stefan asked me, what shall, shall I talk? I said, well, this year was quite, uh, quite stimulating and quite challenging. And uh, I thought of highlighting three issues that were really are really important for the coffee sector. And they do have a common ground. Nowadays, we are always talking about sustainability. I will talk about three issues. The three issues are, one, the uh, coffee social, the, the, sorry, company social responsibility due diligence uh, direct, uh, directive. Second will be the EU deforestation regulation. And third will be the glyphosate issue. The three of them are, the first is a directive, so you know directives have a different implementation in the EU, and the second and the second and the third one will be, ah, one is and the third will be regulations. So they are implemented homogeneously around the EU states. Uh, and they all come from the big pressure for sustainability in the whole that is in the coffee world and not only. And uh, in this case, in the three cases, it's lead, uh, led by the EU. It's positively led by the EU. But then, and also the other uh, uh, member countries are cl clearly active, but it's led by the EU, but then you will see how this, the need of coordination between countries and between uh, countries and the private sector is heavily needed. And the table for intergovernmental dialogue and also for private, private, uh, public-private dialogue is quite something important and unique that you have in the international organization. Coffee organization. So uh, let's start from the uh, due diligence, corporate social uh, due diligence uh, directive, responsibility, coffee social responsibility due diligence for the European, uh, for Europe, that impacts clearly also in producing countries because you look at the whole chain of production. And uh, it, it is uh, quite a big request coming from, uh, starting from, as an initiative from the European authorities, but in general it's something that it's felt needed. It will impact only the big companies with more than 40 uh, bill, uh, million uh, revenues and 250 people. And in... Well, it, but it does have also a lot of input from the 
private side, especially from the European Coffee Federation, uh, who uh, represents the majority of the coffee industry in Europe. It's not only impacting the coffee sector, but it is definitely important for us because it goes up to the producing countries. We all know the three pillars, uh, and we have never to forget that the first pillar for, for sustainability is economical sustainability. If there is non-economical sustainability, there will be no environmental sustainability, neither there will be any social sustainability. Uh, an interesting concept was recently introduced also on sustainability, in my opinion, is more horizontal, transversal, which is also technical sustainability. And to fully ensure that the production chain, whatever production chain, but obviously also in coffee, is sustainable, you need to have traceability. You need to follow your product from bean to cup, including the plant, the plantation, up to the coffee market, and considering, obviously, all the stakeholders from farmers to consumers. It, it involves socially and environmentally sustainable and responsible value chains. It involves a sustainable sourcing approach and a prevention of loss of biodiversity and natural resources. This is a bit an overlap with other initiatives, legislative initiatives, such as, for example, the deforestation regulation that we will see afterwards. And it is really left more to companies to pull the initiative and go to a sustainable chain. But then you need to be very careful not to throw all the responsibilities upwards towards the farmers. What are the uh, priorities for the European coffee sector in this case? To ensure alignment with the existing EU provisions, such as, for example, EUDR, and the international standards, which are also important to mandate a, promotion, uh, a proportionate and risk-based due diligence approach, so to be practical. Reframe the scope of due diligence to the value chain while clarifying appropriate action expected by companies. Set an appropriate role for contractual assurances and audit verification processes while promoting other instruments ensure a harmonized approach on sanction and proportionate civil liability regime, which is, this is, this is fundamental because the, the, there is an interest from companies for uh, being sustainable and uh, taking it seriously up throughout the chain. But clearly you, and I, again, you have, there, there, will be, there will be sanctions but you need, that, uh, you need to put sanctions to stimulate a constructive action, not put, to put sanctions just to risk to kill a company, which is a, a point that needs to be taken into consideration. Strengthen sta stakeholder engagement throughout the due diligence process. Again, as I said, it needs to be a bottom-up initiative, really involving all of the chain, all of the stakeholders, strengthen bilateral engagement and partnership between the EU and third countries. This highlights the role of the ICO, because in the ICO we start to have multilateral dialogue, and afterwards, normally, you get to the bilateral dialogue, because if you do uh, implement something in Europe, and this has to go up the chain 
of production to the producing countries, you need to homo homogenize this process. Uh, the producing countries, some of them for sure, are very active already in sustainable actions. And these actions need to be coordinated together with the legislative uh, initiatives from the European Union. And then assure an on-time publication of guidelines and model contractual clauses, which is heavily needed from the side of uh, the producing countries to understand better, and also from the side of the uh, companies in the EU, how to implement the full directive. I don't know why it's not moving for. Ah, okay. Uh, it is essential to recognize that all actors along the coffee supply chain are responsible for contributing to its sustainability. It's just what I said. So you really need involvement through all the parties. And this involvement uh, is something difficult when you talk some, uh, about something that is worldwide. So we, you start from Europe, but you need to get to all the producing countries and to all the single farmers. And this is not at all easy. Actors and institutional is involved in coffee supply chain must or, or clearly support this process for innovation. This is the schedule, which is already, oh no, but sorry. Now I pass to the UDR. UDR is already in, in place. UDR is the European regulation for deforestation. It was the main issue uh, in Bangalore. In Bangalore, the UDR regulation was a big and huge debate in between EU representatives and the, all of the other countries. Because it's already in place, it's already uh, a regulation, and uh, companies from June 2023, they have 18 months to implement the regulation and to ensure that the coffee they buy, it's not coming from deforested areas. Uh, in, you have, if you are a SME, a small medium enterprise, you have six months more. It's not much. And anyway, the system needs to be implemented within 18 months. And there is a big risk of alterating a free market. There is a big risk of influencing a free market and impacting on prices, maybe also in a negative way. Uh, first of all, the regulation monitors changes starting from a cutoff date that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's 2020, they monitor changes in the forest cover. The, one of the targets is also to protect human rights, which is quite general, I would say, not really meaningful in this context, but it's, it's there. And uh, uh, establish new balance between environmental and business interest, regulate process so to improve benchmarking system. When I say benchmarking system, I say how uh, one, co one country acts. Uh, for example, if we look uh, at Brazil, Brazil has an extremely evolved system of tracing uh, its own coffee. And uh, uh, the benchmarking with Brazil would be extremely useful, for example, for other countries to improve their system in tracing and tracking the coffee within their country up to export. So, and then to go back and to geolocalize where the uh, production area is and to check if this production area is deforested or not deforested. Lead to geographic uh, location tracing of each plot of land where the commodity was produced. So there is a lot of work. Technically, it's not so easy because the will is to identify exactly from which plot of land coffee comes from and to check if this plot of land was deforested or not deforested after 2020. And if it is deforested, you cannot import the coffee because if you import the coffee from that plot of land, well, I mean, and one being, and you know that coffee, it's not the farm that the bag from the farm comes to your company in Europe, 
Normally, it's blended in origin already. But if you have only a few uh, beans that come from the deforested area, that, that single lot will be not in conformity. So if you import it, you will be heavily fined. But the fines are so that the risk is that you might close your company. So the risk is heavy, even though administrative in this case. And in some countries, the risk is it gets also on the criminal side. So it's very heavy. It's a very heavy issue. Uh, innovate plantation systems? Yeah, OK, because uh, obviously not to deforest that means if, if we have uh, demand increasing, you need uh, more yield from the single each plot, which is quite uh, quite a simple simple uh, uh, way to to think about it, but not so easy to implement it. Uh, what is the different? Then, then, then there is all, there are all the definitions, starting from the definition of forest that you can read here. Uh, but this definition of forest is might be confounded with agroforestry. And it's two different things. And the risk of confusing the two is there and need to be clarified. So we are very near to implement this thing because if you think that we have 18 months from June, so it's already three months are gone. And we need to be in time because the coffee that will be on the market in, in 18 months from June needs already to be in conformity. So you need to supply before. So you need to anticipate time. So time is extremely restricted. And these clarifications are heavily needed in urgency. Uh, in the case of, uh, of uh, agroforestry, you can see that the accepted uh, canopy cover is uh, even higher than what is considered forest. So the confusion is a risk, a serious risk. But the conversion from forest to agroforestry is considered as deforestation. We move to the third issue, which is positively uh, evolving right now. It appears that glyphosate will be approved again as an herbicide for producing countries within the limits that were already established before. And this is uh, an important thing because if not, uh, the risk that uh, non-conform uh, non uh, coffee not in conformity uh, on the side of glyphosate to be imported in Europe was very high. Uh, again, glyphosate is a herbicide. It is now approved uh, up to the December. It is the renewal is going on, but it appears to be fine, thanks God. So this regulation is uh, will be issued uh, likely in a short time uh, because of the results that we have uh, from EFSA and ECHA, the two institutions, the EFSA, you know it, I don't need to explain to you. Uh, ECHA is the European Chemicals Agency. They play two different and synergic roles. And they, they both uh, uh, give, uh, provide data for uh, the eventual approval of such a herbicide in uh, agriculture. It's uh, why these three challenges are so important, because again, it's always sustainability, it's le led by EU uh, countries, and uh, at the end, uh, but at the end, it impacts the f whole world. EU is the main importer for coffee in the world. So, uh, it does have a heavy impact on the market. And what the rules implemented in Europe are, the need to be implemented throughout the whole coffee chain. And this means that you need uh, an important uh, dialogue in between the countries and in between public and private sector to handle these modifications and these evolutions. These are just three examples, but uh, I found them quite significant and still 
the coffee sector is moving towards this, uh, towards this direction. Thank you. Thank you, Max. And uh, you see again, we did a new twist, like what happens with each session. Everyone is always surprised that we are coming from one point to a complete other, and we will later connect, because what Max just described, and I think it's a very important point <laughs> to think about what is coming to us. So we discussed already the Nagoya Protocol, we discussed the novel food uh, uh, regulation, and now we see there is another uh, thing that we really have to have in mind and, and think about, because it is important. And uh, we will later hear about traceability and authentication of coffee, and we can be as precise, meanwhile, the authorities as uh, a few kilometers to track down the beans, let's say 50 kilometers, 100 kilometers, uh, even if it's false, but that's how you'll be judged. <laughs> that's the good news. Uh, and therefore, you should know what it is. So, I open the floor to questions, Dr. Lachenmeier. Yes, perhaps first a comment and a question. While I appreciate the goal of the uh, regulation against deforestation, it sounds a little bit to me like a second wave of colonialism we start from Europe <laughs> because we are now trying to regulate into other countries worldwide. So this was the comment, now the question. Um, how? While Dr. Schwartz is saying that we can tell like 40 kilometers away, as I will later show, I'm not so optimistic. Is there anything in the regulation how you should trace when the coffee comes into the EU? How do you find out from which um, field this bean has been coming? Well, first of all, I, I tend to agree. It's, it's risk is there that uh, we as Europeans uh, tend to, the risk is to impose something to other countries which is unacceptable. But the, in reality the intention is constructive and uh, uh, it, it is political, it, political, a political move clearly. And if you read uh, Mr. Sinkevicius' letter of acceptance uh, when he took the post of uh, Commissioner for Environment, you do understand why. But on the other hand side, the move is positive, and that is why there is the need of uh, dialogue, intergovernmental dialogue, exactly to avoid what you, you fear, and I do fear also, and it, it is clearly there, the, 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 the risk is there. Uh, it, uh, there is a lot of work done for uh, satellite uh, uh, in the, uh, geolocalization for the exact place of, of pro co coffee production. Then to trace the coffee, there are lots of ideas, but it's a matter that is left, left to private sector. I, I was, for example, uh, looking at the, ex the, the Brazilian side, which is very interesting. I was visiting Se Café in August, and uh, 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 Marcos Matos, who's the executive director, was explaining to me that they have implemented the full tracing up to the export for uh, the coffee parcel. You have to ensure that eventually coffee deforested areas are excluded, because if not, and there is, a lot, there is also a risk assessment that will be made saying this area is at very low risk for deforestation, this area is middle risk for deforestation, this area is high risk for deforestation. Depending from this, you will have to take action. But again, a lot is left to the private sector to be implemented. And the private sector is exactly asking, hey, what do you want as an insurance? The ICO, for example, said, okay, we can use the certificate of origin that the ICO is issuing for every parcel of coffee to be the document, so to be checked by the custom authorities when you import a parcel of coffee. But this ticking a box must mean something. And how ticking a box will be meaning something? This is, again, in Brazil you have the chain that is verified 
but you have to be sure that it's not even, not even one bean needs to be coming from a deforested area. There are some, country, com, there are some countries where there are a very few deforested areas, and uh, there is action asked to the, these countries to ex exclude them from, production, from uh, commercial production. So if you ensure that uh, deforested areas are excluded from production, then the rest is safe. So this is another opportunity, and there are some countries that are pretty safe on that side. So, but it's not so easy and not so clear how this will be continuing. So there is a lot of, uh, there are a lot of worries uh, in the coffee sector. So thank you. Let me maybe make a very strange move, since we have uh, visitors here also from Borneo, and uh, we know both Borneo, Indonesia, are areas that are, let's say, highly critical also to the risk of deforestation, also thinking of the oil palm uh, uh, situation. Uh, do you have any specific thoughts or ideas about that when you hear this? Now you're in Europe, you hear our ideas. What, what are your ideas uh, when you hear that? I think the biggest challenge that we are facing now... Okay. Just a second, do you, you get a microphone. Just one, one is running or two. Run, run, forest. So that's good Thank for you. deforestation. We so run I think the forest. biggest problem we are facing now is that because the Liberica, they are different from Arabica and Canephora, if you, sh if you grow the Liberica below the shed, it won't fruit. So we are somehow facing this dilemma that whether we, to, whether we should cut off the tree in the rainforest to grow Liberica or um, we shouldn't do it because if we were to cut out the tree in the rainforest to grow Liberica, it will um, defeat the purpose of you know, anti-deforestation. But if we, would, if we are not cutting down the big trees to grow Liberica, like most of the cases we have now in Sarawak, I went to a place that they claim to have an uh, how many trees? Uh, 21,000 Liberica trees. The trees are all there, um, planted very tightly underneath the durian tree and other trees, but they're not fruiting at all. Maybe one or two fruits per tree. So but this is a big, I mean, but, big but, challenge for us. So I have, may, may I ask how, how I, I have an answer for this. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think this should be considered agroforestry and excluded from the case of being uh, for, uh, forest, so it would should be a, even reducing uh, the canopy above this okay. tree shouldn't be considered as deforestation reducing because it's the... agroforestry. But this is to to ha to be confirmed uh, by the interpretation of the EU authorities. So this is my first question, my, my first answer. The second answer would be try to implement uh, where already cultivation is there and raise the yield. But I mean, it's not your case in this. In, 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 you would not uh, increase uh, and have any yield uh, as far as you have uh, explained if you do not reduce the canopy cover. So it is right. clear. But I, 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 I do think that it should be considered agroforestry. All right, thank you. Any other question? Okay. 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 Anyone? Well, then, otherwise, uh, you will still have the chance to, to talk to Max. Max, thank you so much. Don't run away. I'll come to you. Thank you, Stefan.